Year after year, we've been seeing you right here. Your support for the community is, we cannot forget. As we know, uh, Indo-American uh, Democratic Organization, 38 years of an organization in celebration, and you will always make a point to be with them. Let's hear from you about this organization, what your feelings have been, and uh, what's going on recent in Washington. Sure, it is an honor to be here every year. For 10 years as a county commissioner and, do, and here in Cook County, and for now nine years as a congressman. It's my pleasure to be here. This uh, organization is absolutely critical to express democratic values throughout our country coming from the Indian community. So I, I think it has a valuable voice throughout our country. Uh, Washington is a very, very difficult time. I tell folks we are doing what we have to do. All right? uh, we're focused on the Russian investigation. We're focused on pushing back Trump programs that will hurt everyday Americans, middle class Americans, working class families, and in a sort of a hate-filled environment, as was his campaign. What we'd rather be doing is making advances and providing health care for everyone, education opportunities, dealing with crime and gun violence. Uh, instead of saying that climate change is a hoax, we ought to be working towards solving that problem. If it is a hoax, we have not been seeing the temperature. It's a 52 degree, what you're talking about, in Chicago in the month of November. I'm sure. That will be, it'll be the warmest year in, in history again this year. Living in denial, I think. Uh, Congressman, as we mentioned about, you know, the safety, the security, so many things happening, we just saw, I mean, I think I was reading my wall on the Facebook, people have been tired, they say prayers, like, you know, we never know whom we are going to write the prayers for. Now, prayers for Texans, prayers for New Yorkers, those who lost their life, this is becoming, like, so common. Is there an end to it or no? You know, uh, I think it's important that we think and give thought and prayers to the victims and their families. But at some point in time, the country collectively has to come to its senses and get to the root source of those problems, right? The hatred that's here, the violence, the violent mentality, understanding that violence is a public health issue. Yes. And addressing the core reasons, uh, one of them is it's way too easy to get a gun. The shooter in Vegas was able to get weapons designed for a theater of war and was able to kill so many so quickly. The fact is, if you've got a multi-round clip and, an, and a weapon that can fire like a machine gun, you're not protecting your home, you're not protecting your family, you're not hunting deer, you're hunting people. We have to end that. Let's hear about the health care which has just been open now because so how people should be getting on to, like, you know, enrolling? Uh, at very first. We have to beat back the Trump and Republican efforts to repeal the ACA. We need to maintain Medicaid expansion. Uh, we need to provide an expansion of those programs instead of contracting this. It's a very cynical effort to cut away the basic opportunities, the right that every American has to have health care. Once we get past that, we need to move forward and provide health care to every American. Your office is always available to people for the help. We wish you all the best. Good luck and thank you. In case if we need, so you can, uh, means like the person who makes a point, no matter how busy he is, but he's always here for the community. So in case if we need him, we'll be there knocking your door. Thank it's my honor to serve the Indian community. Thank you so much. Now with us is Ram as the president of the IATO 38th Annual Gala. Let's hear from you about the activities that we have done over a period of years and where do we want to take it further? Thank you so much for coming and, and uh, having this interview with me. Um, we're really excited about the progress we've made over the last 38 years of engaging South Asian Americans in the political process from registering to vote to running for office. Um, last election, obviously, it was very challenging um, at the, the presidential level. Our candidate did not win, and we have someone in there that we don't agree with the issues on. Um, however, in Illinois, we were really proud to help um, elect um, a number of Asian Americans to office, including U.S. Senator Tammy Duckworth, U.S. Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy, um, State Representative Teresa Ma, and uh, Metropolitan Water Reclamation District Commissioner uh, Josina Morita. We've also doubled um, the number of Asian Americans that have voted in key state rep representative districts, and then Cook County-wide, we were able to um, 
quadrupled the amount, the amount of voters that voted in the Asian American community from 2012 to 2016. So it's about using our voice, voting, and running for office. When we talk about like voice awareness is counts a lot. Like you know, earlier it used to be, oh, our people don't go and vote. They've just been voters, but they don't go. Means like, so do you see that? And uh, how the new generation upcoming? What their interests are for these kind of organizations when we're talking, getting engaged in the politics, Simon? Mean. Absolutely. We're seeing it now. Um, because of some of the things that our current president is doing and our current governor is doing uh, in terms of the Muslim ban and other things like other issues like that, uh, we're seeing the younger generation uh, move forward, step forward. Uh, look at what happened with the Muslim ban. When that took place, over thousands and thousands of people went to the airport to speak out against what happened. So the younger generation of the South Asian American community, they're, they're not only voting, they're volunteering, they're contributing, they're um, stepping up to run for office. Um, and that's really important because that has been a challenge for our community. And um, I'm really excited about what's, what's um, in store for the next election. On a concluding note, I would like to ask if somebody wants to, is IADO on the trail of uh, actually grooming uh, the candidates? Absolutely. So um, as we mentioned before, we have five South Asia, uh, five Asian Americans um, that, that are now elected in elected office um, in Illinois. And now we have at least five to ten Asian American um, uh, candidates that are running for office this election cycle. So people are stepping up. They're realizing that we need a more diverse government. We need people in the room that have um, immigrant experience, um, whether their parents came here from this country or whether they came came to this country, whether they came to this country. Um, we need more diverse government with, peop with people in the room that, that are uh, have different perspectives. And that's why we see Asian Americans stepping up to run for office. Wish you all the best. Thank you so much. How you spell your name? Sure. It's uh, Ram, R-A-M as in Mary. Last name, Vili Vallam. V as in Victor. I-L-L-I. V as in Victor. A-L-A-M as in Mary. And how one can be a member of IADO? So you can go to our website, www.iado.org. You can sign up there. We'll get, we'll get in touch. We'll register you to vote. We'll encourage you to run for office um, or something in between. So thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. What's coming next for the people of Illinois? Well, we have to get signatures on petitions. I'm running for attorney general. And President Obama told us at the beginning of the year, if you don't like what Trump's doing, grab a clipboard. Get out there and get signatures and take on the uh, bad things that uh, is going on in Washington as well as anywhere here in Illinois. I don't particularly like the way uh, Bruce Rauner's operating. So what we have to do is use democracy to straighten it out. And uh, that's why I'm running for attorney general. Let me talk about your support to the community. You're going around with them, with the Indian community. It goes very deep root. And That's so right. how happy you are with that these people have this organization endorsed you a number of times for various oh, different indeed. positions. Uh, this organization I've been with since the beginning, the Indo-American Democratic Organization, people from all walks of life volunteering for a good cause. And it's important that we honor Indo-Americans all over Illinois. And when I was governor, I did that every single day. And I think it's important that we encourage folks to run for office, to be appointed to office, uh, a very important appointments, and that's one of the things I stand for. Well, first of all, you're right. This organization, the Indo-American Democratic Organization, is an old friend. I used to be on the board of the organization. They were instrumental in electing me to the State House of Representatives for the first time in 2010, and we've had the joy of working together throughout my time in office. I'm running for governor now because the state is at a turning point. Because we have a governor who has failed, and before that, for decades, we had a system that was broken that was harming the ability of South Asians to have adequate representation and was harming the ability of all kinds of communities, people of color, women, the poor, the middle class, from having a government that works for the rest of them. This is the moment to build a movement to change our state government, and that's why I'm running for governor. As you just mentioned, why do you feel this is important for people to vote for you? What difference will you bring in the state of Illinois? Because Illinois geographically has been wonderful as we talk about it. But when we talk about the status, like in the number of the state of Illinois, it's been the rank is going down and down, which is not healthy sign. That's right. The state has been hurting. The state has been taken apart under Governor Rauner. We need to defeat Bruce Rauner. He has failed. 
But we need to be, defeat him with the right Democrat. We need to defeat him with a progressive Democrat. I'm the progressive in this race. We need to defeat him with someone who's an organizer, who can organize constituencies from across the state to demand change. Because right now we have a system that locks most of our voices out. We need a governor to finally work for the middle class, a governor who understands the struggles that ordinary people go through in their lives. And we need a governor with the experience needed to actually transform our state. We have a billionaire president with no experience and a billionaire governor with no experience. That's not working. Let's try something different. Indo-American Democratic Organization, when we talk about it, with us is David Orr, and he's been endorsed by this organization many, 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 many times. And it is important, like, you know, when we talk about what his role has been, that people have to uh, do, get registered to vote, people have to go and vote. It's a big challenge, Cook County. I mean, like, it's not easy, like a second largest county. How are you managing for many years? Well, I'm managing with help with groups like IADO. You know, kind of my career has gone hand in hand with Indo-American Democrats. Um, I got started in 1979, and soon after that, a lot of my neighbors in Rogers Park area formed IADO. And, you know, my job now, of course, is to run the elections. But if you look at India and you look at the folks here, uh, and their commitment has been steadfast to educating people, to registering them, to helping us win this legislation over the years to get automatic registration. So there's a lot of good things that have come out of our partnership. Uh, you did one me. thing which was very interesting, ballot in the language of India, Hindi. That's right. Uh -huh. Yeah, and that, that, that's exciting. We have Right now we have four languages that we have on the ballot, including Hindi. Uh, of course, someday in the future we might have more because, uh, you know, there's a lot of languages in India besides Hindi. But at least we got a good start there. And, um, again, the uh, Indian American community helps so much with election judges. It helps I'm us with volunteers. Oh, you are one of them? Good. And where are you a judge? Uh, in Cook County, in Good. Well, thank you for working. Um, so again, that's what I mean by our kind of careers have gone hand in hand. Um, and you consistently become more important. Look at all the elected officials that are here tonight. Um, and you are steadfast in your commitment to the small d democracy. The more interesting question really is what's going on in Washington? That will be coming next. Okay, well the 11th district is one I'm very proud at the response of the people in the 11th district, which includes you know, Naperville, Lyle, Downers Grove. I just saw you, they were in uh, the Diwali, I think. Yes, uh -huh. is how they have responded to all the divisiveness that we're seeing, um, you know, frankly from the Trump administration and from many locations in this. Uh, many sources in this country and that the people in my district have stood up again and again you know against the hate crimes that we've seen from time to time we saw something happen today in texas too. that's right and we don't know yet what's happened there but i think it should be clear to everyone that there are way too many guns under not enough control in this country so uh, let's hear about your association with the community at large, the Indian community at large. Well, you know, in, in Naperville, uh, the Indo-American community is extremely strong. Uh, but they're really uh, of significant presence in Aurora um, and in Joliet, Bolingbrook, and throughout the district. And, and so one of the things that I really appreciate is the dedication of the Indo-American community to education and to science. Because if you look at what's happening in our country right now, uh, where the tools of technology are using to divide people, they're being used to say fundamentally unscientific things. I think it helps to remember that when someone studies chemistry in India, in the United States, or anywhere, it is, you know, it is the same chemistry. And when you look at the DNA of human beings, 99% of the DNA in human beings is identical. And so I think science is the one area that should unite us. Indeed, an honor and pleasure to have you, Pramilaji, with us. As you mentioned, Chicago and Chicago connections, right? Yes. So I could see that when you were talking about it, what was going on in mind. So let's hear from you as a woman to a woman. Father wanted you to be a doctor, engineer, or lawyer. <laughs> And he never expected you to be a congresswoman. No, so what was the reaction last year? Well, they are so proud of me. And my mother 
came for my swearing in and she was you know in tears she follows everything that I do um, she tells my father my father's not so good on the internet but they're very very proud of me my father keeps calling me a minister because he he thinks it's you know like India but um, no I think they couldn't be happier that I'm here that I'm doing what I'm doing and you know I think they've let go of the doctor lawyer engineer now it's almost a year now because we're talking, we're just talking November, a few days from now, like we will be seeing that you saw the results coming and you, I always talk to Raja, he talks about the two samosa caucus and two samosas I found you in one room, it's a very powerful room when yeah. you saw. And important thing, what you saw today in this room, what do we see the future for the Indian diaspora when we are seeing? I think it's very bright. I mean, one of the things I talked about was, you know, the Indian American women who are um, advancing in the state legislature in Washington state after I came from there. And I think that that's what happens when you start electing Indian Americans. It helps, we can support, we can mentor, we can, um, you know, help build the leadership ladder and the pipeline. And so we have eight South Asian American women running, Indian American women running in Washington state for different offices. So we're building that leadership ladder and I think the future is very bright. I think that Indian Americans still have to continue to be more involved, you know, in doing the hard work, not just taking a picture with a politician, but actually going out and knocking on doors, supporting with financial contributions, you know, making sure they run for office themselves. I mean, these are all very important pieces of building our political power. May I ask you four plus one? I'm going to say that because we just said yeah. that four of you plus the one. Right. Does it make a difference when you have your own because the amount of number of people that we have and the presence we should have, we are still not there. We do. Well, there is a big vacuum. I think there is a big vacuum and you know a lot of what I have spent my time doing is trying to uh, speak to Indian Americans but also to immigrants across the country and I think that you know now we all have to use our platforms to help do that. It's not enough just to be a legislator an and to write bills but to really think about how we're advancing the understanding of what it takes to run for office and win because it's it's difficult it's very very difficult but we also need to make sure that our community is supporting us so that we can stay here so both things I think are true and there is a vacuum and we need to continue to build that power because Indian Americans are still not seen as the political power that we should be seen as. Because I just spoke to someone actually, I was talking to Ram, you know, we, we were treated like we don't go and vote. So I said, why? Because why are you saying that? That applies to everybody. If we are seeing it, it's been decreasing now. It's not only our population, the South Asians, the people of Indian origin, those who don't go to vote, the others also, because they are saying, why should we go and vote? For what? Like, But there has to be an awareness campaign. And when you are a congresswoman, you don't only represent Indian community, you represent the right. whole like district of yours. I do. I would like you to share about your experience, uh, a family which was about to be deported, you know, because you belong to everyone and that's what we are celebrating. And we Indians are known for this, that we embrace everyone. It's not only my own community right. at large. Right. And that's true. I mean, I think that I've been fighting for immigrants of all kinds, um, but I'm also fighting for American Caucasian workers of all kinds because you 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 know you bring a particular emphasis and understanding and focus to the community or culture that you come from and so you care more passionately sometimes about those issues than for somebody who finds it very removed and distant but that doesn't mean you, you know I have 70 percent white voters in my district so I have to continue to bring together a strong coalition in order to get elected and I think that when I'm in office I'm always conscious of all of the priorities, but is immigration particularly important to me? Yes, it is. And am I going to fight for, you know, whether it's a family on the plane that I had to get off the plane, or whether it's the Somalis who are being targeted, or whether it's, you know, uh, immigrants who are trapped as undocumented immigrants? That's, that's near and dear to my heart. So you have to do a little bit of both. And I do think it matters, though, when you have somebody in office because your priorities are different and you do 
um, you do lift up issues in a way that other people just don't because they don't have that personal experience. On a concluding note, because the people will be watching you on TV Asia all across, so what's your message to the women of Indian origin? We are just going to be approaching International Women's Day in the March, and woman has to take a lead. She cannot just keep sitting tight. No, a woman exactly. can run the family, community, and the society. No, exactly. And I've been taking on a lot of sexism in the United States House of Representatives. There have been a number of uh, articles written about how I refuse to allow that to go and my message out there is stand strong refuse to be minimized refuse to be patronized and let all of the small men out there be intimidated by you it's okay you know they can be intimidated by you but you don't have to be less in order to make somebody more so that's my message